these kids just want to make themselves a haunted house. And, you know, there's four of them, and they do have uh, separate personalities. Well, at least two of them do. Hello and welcome to Blockbuster Video. If you don't know what that is, it is where I play a single game of Tetris Marathon and try to review a film before the blocks reach the top or until 150 lines. Uh, spoilers are at line 50. Um, and we start on go. So Hell House LLC is a mockumentary horror film that I watched uh, during the spooky season of 2022. And I don't know where I had heard that it was a pretty good movie, but I did hear it somewhere. And I'm not saying whoever told me was wrong. I'm just going to say it's, it's, uh, it's not as good as I hoped it would be. But it has really cool things about it. Let me elaborate. So, um, Hell House LLC is kind of this, it's like a documentary within a documentary, which is one of my problems with it, where there is clearly a documentary being made by a crew about a situation or a, an event that happened where a bunch of uh, haunt goers, and if you don't know what that is, uh, haunted houses, um, during the spooky season, people like to go get scared at specific locations and facilities. And, um, you know, some, sometimes they get really elaborate. Uh, places like um, theme parks, um, most notably, uh, that come to my mind is uh, Universal Studios. They put a lot of production into it, and they have different themed rooms. And some people go every year. It's a big thing. And, and Hell House is like a independent run company with about four dudes and one woman and of course the woman is uh, in a relationship with one of the men because of course it's a film and in this movie these guys decide upon an abandoned hotel and in this very very small town of New York they are from New York City they go to this small town and they don't know the history behind this hotel that it's kind of, you know, it's a little messed up. It's got a past, like most horror movies do with their locations. And um, something about satanic cults and the guy who originally owned it um, killed himself in the dining room. There was a, a group of people that showed up for a room and then suddenly disappeared. And he has documentation showing they left, but then people started the rumors and then he killed himself, blah, 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 blah. These kids just want to make themselves a haunted house. And, you know, there's four of them, and they do have uh, separate personalities. Well, at least two of them do. Um, well, I guess three of them. There's, they also have monosyllabic names, which got really annoying when t telling them apart in this very fast-paced documentary-style movie, where um, the documentary f crew is showing the documentary footage that the surviving uh, member of Hell House LLC, the lady whose name I forgot, I'm gonna forget the men's names too because they're they're very forgettable and easy. I know there was Mac, I believe Alex, Paul, and Tony, and I guess I lied to you. Um, the woman's name was, was it Diane or Kate. Um, I, I here's what I know. They start seeing some shit in this hotel as they're building the haunt right it's the standard slow burn horror movie thing where people start seeing stuff there's people sleepwalking the classic um uh, uh paranormal activity um tricks super cheap and easy to make but very effective in scares and so instead of leaving they then basically pressure each other into staying one of the guys um, I believe it's Paul, who is a sex pest, by the way. He is a fucking problem. In the filming of their own documentary, he documents his own um, examples of sexual harassment. It's pretty hilarious. Where he's talking to women and you're like, Hey, Paul, how about you just leave because you're fucking gross? Like, it got very close to these characters just saying that to each other. 
Well, he's the first one to get, quote unquote, we're at spoiler territory. He's the first one to get what I assume is possessed, where he just stops talking to them after he interacts with a uh, uh, what looks like a lady ghost. And they just keep on trucking, building this haunted house. And the moments that I liked in this movie is at first it started with like, OK, guys, we got it. Hell House LLC, this is going to be the, the location. And then slowly their characters actually developed. I say all of them except for Tony, because I really didn't distinguish Tony from any other person or thing. But Paul was the sex pest, who I think did uh, 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 technology. Uh, Paul... Well, Paul was that guy. Tony seemed to be kind of the logistics, like, building style, like, facilities. Max seemed to be the logistics, like, pessimist. That was like, here's how, like, the producer, like, this is how we get it done. And then Alex is the dreamer. And Alex is the one really pushing that we gotta do, we gotta do it here. We gotta do it here. Despite all the crazy shit we've seen, we gotta do it here. And there are scenes that are really well acted where it's like, wow, these guys, they're friends, but they have to make this work. Like, there's a moment that where they don't expressly say what's going on, but one, one of the members threatens to leave, saying, like, it's obviously bad, we gotta go. Like, even your own girlfriend really wants to leave, but she's just sticking by you. And they don't say it out loud, but it's pretty clear that they need this to work out for the business to stay afloat. So the one threatening to leave stays. And it's becoming clear, like, hey, no matter what happens, these guys are in it for the long haul. But the documentary is talking about this event. It opens up with this event. It's almost like a Netflix documentary where it's like, oh, man. All those crazy, uh, juicy um, dessert of the true crime is going to be behind this wall of vegetables that is context. So they keep giving you the context. They keep giving you the teasers. And honestly, what happens? Not that interesting. Um, is it scary? Yeah, a little bit. Um, and then the, like, psych out uh, new ending was just kind of like, oh, what? It was a very much a what are we talking about ending where the creators of the documentary make a slew of terrible decisions and then the big reveal is just kind of like a huh which is kind of a bummer because I think the movie started to win me over with a little bit of its subtlety um, it's not by any means the best uh, horror movie I've seen recently and it's not Something that I think I will like hold up in my memory forever, but it had moments that I was like, "This could have, this could have been something a little different. This could have held a higher place in my uh, in my heart." But it just kind of dropped that ending. It was just kind of like, "Okay, cool." Um, not even like because with a movie like that where it's like, "Okay, it seems super low budge," you know, we're gonna keep it um light. Like, you can get away with just a ambiguous ending because it's like, oh, well, it's artistic. This one kind of just gives you, like, here's what happened. We're not going to tell you exactly, but here it is. And it's like, just want a little more, Hell House, Hell House LLC. But it is what it is. Have a good one. <laughs>